Today's lesson in our second lesson in lesson 3.1 is 3.1b, representing proportional relationships with graphs. Now before you guys go and start writing too much down, I want to tell you that you need to do this lesson on graph paper. Okay, we're representing proportional relationships with graphs. Therefore, we're going to have to do this lesson on graph paper. So pause the video, go get some graph paper. You should all have graph paper at home or with you somewhere. Make sure you're doing this lesson on graph paper. It's going to be very difficult to do if you don't have graph paper. And our goal for this lesson is to identify the constant of proportionality from a graph, then to write an equation to represent that graph. All right, and a couple of key pieces of information, a couple of key notes. The first one is that a graph represents a proportional relationship if it passes through the origin or if it touches the origin, that's point zero comma zero. On the other hand, if the graph does not pass through the origin or does not touch the origin, it is not proportional. So again, you see a graph that touches the origin, that graph is a proportional relationship. But if the graph of the line does not touch the origin, then it is not proportional. Now, if it is proportional, so again, if it passes through the origin, you can find the constant of proportionality using the same equation that we used yesterday. k is equal to y over x. And in order to find the values that you can use for y and x, you can use the coordinates for any points on the graph. You can use those for your values for x and y. Alright, so let's take a look at a couple examples of what this is going to look like. For our first graph, we're given this graph here. I want you guys to pause the video and copy down this graph to the best of your ability. Uh, there aren't any labels or anything like that for the x and y axis. There's no title for this graph, so we don't know what this graph represents necessarily, but we do see the line, and we see that that line passes through the origin. Okay, we see, and you don't have to do this on your paper, but right here, right at the origin, we see that the line uh, passes through the origin or touches the origin. And so because it passes through the origin, because it's a straight line, we can know for certain that the graph of this line represents a proportional relationship. And so there's two things that we want to be able to do with this graph. The first thing that we want to be able to do is identify the constant of proportionality. And in order to do that, we're again going to use k is equal to y over x. But in order to use that, we need to find values for x and y. Again, to do that, we're going to go to the ordered pairs. I put those in green on my graph just to make them a little bit easier to see. So we need to identify the coordinates for each of these points. Guys, if you don't remember how to identify coordinates, you need to search on YouTube for a video that deals with plotting points or reading points on a graph. Because that is a crucial skill for this lesson. If you're not able to plot points or identify points on a graph, you're going to have a tough time with this, okay? But in order to identify ordered pairs, or coordinates, we're going to have a parentheses, comma, parentheses, and we need to identify what values are going to go inside that parentheses. The x value of our ordered pair is going to go first. The y value of our ordered pair is going to go second. So the first number in the, or in the parentheses tells us how far to the right or to the left right we have to go. The second number in the parentheses tells us how far we have to go up or down to plot our point. So for this very first point, this uh, point, again, you don't have to circle it, but that point right there, we count to the right how many units it is to the right. And if we count along the number line that we have at the bottom, we see that it's three units to the right. So I'm going to put a three in the first space of my order pair. And then from going to the right 3, we have to go up 2 to get to the order pair. So we go right 3 and then up 2 in order to plot our first point. Now for our second point, we see that we have to go to the right 6 and then we go up 4. All right, we always, Our first number always tells us how far to go left or right. Our second number always tells us how far we need to go up or down. For our third order pair, we have to go to the right 9 units, and we go up 6 units. 
And for our last ordered pair, we have to go to the right 12, and we go up 8. As I said in the, on the previous slide, if we see that a line is proportional, in this case it is, again, because it passes through the origin, we can take any one of our ordered pairs here, we can take any one of our ordered pairs and use the values for x and y to find our value for k. So let's go ahead and for this problem, let's use this ordered pair right here. Okay? In order to do that, again, we have k is equal to our y value of this ordered pair is going to be 4, and our x value for this ordered pair is 6. Now we look at that fraction and it's not simplified. We will need to simplify it. So we can divide both the numerator and the de de denominator by 2 to get k is equal to 2 over 3. And so that's true of that second point there. But guys, if we use any of those ordered pairs on that graph of that line, we will end up with k equals 2 thirds. Alright, so that's the first thing that we want to do. We wanted to identify the constant of proportionality. The second thing that we wanted to do is actually be able to write an equation that represents this graph. So if we remember back to yesterday, to write an equation, we use y is equal to kx. And so we're just going to take our value for k and substitute it in for k. So our equation is going to be y is equal to 2 thirds x. And with that, we are done. We identified the constant of proportionality as 2 thirds. So therefore, our equation is y is equal to 2 thirds x. Okay? So there's our first example. Let's take a look at another example. For our second example, it says the graph below shows the relationship between the weight of an object on Earth and its weight on the moon. Write an equation for this relationship. So guys, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not. I really hope you are, and I'm sure Ms. Trasiak really, really hopes you are as well. But if you put a scale on Earth, and you put a scale on the moon, and you weigh something on the Earth, and you weigh something on the moon, they are not going to weigh the same. They're not going to have the same weight. They will have the same mass, but they will not have the same weight. Okay? So, we have a graph here that compares the weight of an object on Earth to the weight of an object on the moon. So the first thing that we have to do is identify if this graph is proportional or not. And we can see right away and very clearly that this graph is proportional because it passes through the origin right here. And so now what we want to do is we want to identify what the, um, what the constant of proportionality is and then we need to write an equation to represent this table or this graph, I'm sorry. In order to do that, first thing we want to do is identify the coordinates of the points that are plotted here. So our first point is right here. That looks to be 6, 1. Okay? You'll notice that the x-axis has a scale that goes up by 3's. So each grid line represents going up three units, okay? So I, don't, I didn't put the odd numbers there, but we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, all the way up from there. The y-axis, on the other hand, still goes up by ones. I didn't put the odd numbers there again, but I did put the even numbers. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up from there. So even though we go to the right two grid lines, we're still going to the right six units. We need to be able to recognize that. So our first point again is 6 comma 1. Our second order pair is 12 comma 2. Our third order pair is 18 comma 3. And then our last order pair, which is further to the right, is going to be 30 comma 5. So we need to identify the constant proportionality first, and we do that using k is equal to y over x. 
And so we need to take any one of those ordered pairs, where we, any one of those coordinates where we have ordered pairs, and substitute the values for x and y into that fraction. So let's go ahead and use, let's go ahead and use this point here. So we have k is equal to, our y value is going to be 3, and our x value is going to be 18. So we have k is equal to 3 over 18. We see that 3 and 18 have a common denominator, or a common factor, so k is going to be equal to 1 over 6. Therefore, our equation for this relationship is going to be y is equal to 1 sixth x. And this x here needs to be either behind the fraction or in the numerator. If you put your x in the denominator, that's going to give us a completely different equation. So I want you to write your fractions with horizontal fraction bars. If you write your fractions like this, That makes it looks like the, that makes it look like the x is in the denominator, and that is not the not the correct graph. So I don't want you write your writing your your equations or your fractions like this. I don't want you writing your fractions that way. Now with this with this relationship, there's a couple questions that I want to ask and answer with you guys related to this graph and this relationship. So the first one, and I, I ran out of space on this page, so there's not, not a whole lot of room for me to work. But my first question is, an object weighs 4 pounds on the moon, how much will it weigh on Earth? And so this is, this is a problem that you have to write down. Make sure you're writing down everything that's on the graph. Well, in order to find this one, there are two ways that we can do it. We can either take the number 4 and substitute it into our equation. Now, because it's the weight of an ob object on the moon and the moon is on the y-axis, we would substitute 4 in for y. So it would be 4 is equal to 1 sixth x. That would be one way to solve this equation. Or another way what we could do is we could find the number 4 on our vertical number line. So that's right here. And then we can just trace that number over until we touch our graph. And then from there, we can go down to the x-axis. And so the number on the x-axis tells us how much an object would weigh on the Earth if it was 4 pounds on the moon. So we see right here that a 4-pound object on the moon would weigh 24 pounds on the Earth. Okay? So that's our first problem. Second problem says a different object weighs 60 kilograms on Earth. What's its weight on the moon. So for this one, we could try and find 60 on the number line, but our number line on the x-axis doesn't go that far, so we have to use a different method. So what we can do instead is we can take 60, and since 60 is the weight on the earth, weight on the earth is the x-axis, we can substitute 60 in for x. So our equation, I'm going to make a little space over here for me to show my work. Our equation, again, is y equals 1 sixth, but then instead of using x, I'm going to use 60 for the, mass of, or for the weight of the object on the earth. So 1 sixth times 60. Well, we can put that 60 as 60 over 1, and then we can see also that 6 goes into 60, and 6 goes into 6. 6 goes into 60 10 times. So y is going to be 10. So y is equal to 10 kilograms. So a 60-pound object on Earth would weigh 10 kilograms on the moon. Okay? Write down any questions that you guys have from this video lesson, and we'll be sure to go over those questions in class tomorrow.